Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having us. Uh, welcome to our, our session on, on funding. I'll be starting the presentation on can export and Sandra will do the presentation on UDC and Steph will do the presentation. Uh, sorry, Sandra will do BDC and Stefan will, will do uh, ADC. So uh, I have a couple of slides. Uh, this is the slide where we see the, the four uh, sub programs. So can export is um, is a, a family of four sub programs. Can export SME, can es export association, and can export innovation, and com can export community investment. I'll spend more time today uh, to talk about can export SME as. Uh, I think most of you must be interested in, in getting from, the, from this program. But uh, as you can see from the slide, the Can Export SME and Can Export Association is uh, aiming at supporting international business development, where Can Export Innovation is uh, aiming at supporting innovation and, and finding partners abroad for uh, research and development. And, um, the, the little odd one in the family is the Can Export Community Investment, which is uh, aiming at attracting foreign direct investment. Uh, next slide, please. So, Can Export, the key facts about Can Export funding program it aims at increasing Canadian employment and improve Canada's capacity to compete in the global economy. Uh, we have about 33 million a year uh, divided between the four sub programs, but Can Export SME is the biggest of the four. It's a cost sharing program. Um, it's divided uh, for, for some of them 70, 75%, 25, us paying the, the 75% and for the company to jump in to provide the rest of the funding. We're implementing this, as you can see here on the panel, with EDC, BDC, but also NRC IRAP, the Agriculture Ministry, and also uh, our provincial and territorial uh, partners. So the, the overall objective, combined with the Trade Commissioner Service, uh, uh, service <laughs> is to increase uh, overseas export by 50% by 2025. Next slide, please. So as, as most of you did when COVID hit in, in March, we uh, brainstormed and sat together and thought, how can we help companies now that they cannot travel? Most of our program uh, support travel-related activity. So uh, we re we, our program already had a lot of uh, eligible expenses to support uh, uh, the preparation to explore foreign markets. So we beef up uh, or increase the, the ceiling for those expenses. I'll tell you about it uh, later. Um, we, we keep adapting as, as you guys are adapting, as the SMEs are adapting. Uh, we're following you, we're monitoring what's going on, and we're making sure the program is still report reporting to a Canadian SME's needs and adapting also to the foreign market. Um, so next slide, please. This is our website. Uh, I invite you to visit it. All the information is on it. Uh, the application guide, uh, the eligibility criteria, uh, the activities that can be funded and, uh, and how to apply. Next slide. Next slide, please. So this is a slide on Can Export SME. Uh, the objective of Can Export SME is to help Canadian uh, SME pursue export opportunities for their product and services in international markets where they have little or no sales. It is a continuous intake. How, however, I want to mention that the website will be closed just for uh, the application portion of Can Export SME on December 14th at midnight, and it will reopen on January 7th. We need to close because we're uh, we will be launching a new application uh, IT system, 
which will be uh, more user friendly and also uh, easier for you to apply to monitor your your uh, project and also to claim to do your claim. Um, yes, next slide, please. So I, as you can see, it uh, you can get funding up to seventy five thousand dollars. So it's interesting. Uh, this slide on eligible applicants. So you need to be incorporated, have a CRA business number, except for uh, if you're registered on First Nation Reserve, have less than 500 employees. So it's it's still pretty open to almost all the SMEs in Canada. I think 99.9% and declare revenue between 100,000 and 100 million dollar in the previous. Uh, tax reporting year. It's open to all markets and to all sectors. Next slide, please. Uh, we have divided some countries into sub market. Uh, as you can see here, Brazil, India, China, and the United States. So if you have a project uh, in, uh, in the north of the states or the south of the states, that's count, that counts for two markets you still can uh, apply for activities in three other markets. Uh, the the uh, key eligibility criteria here is uh, you have to have less than $100,000 or less than 10% of com company total sales during the company previous tax reporting year in that market. So it's really specific to foreign markets. And it's to explore new markets. So if you're already installed in, in one market, it, it's not a program uh, for you. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide is on eligible activities. Uh, there's A to G activities. Of course, the A1, the travel to meeting, is now not eligible. Uh, it will depend on the status of the travel advisory advisory that you can consult on uh, travel.gc.ca uh, until the government of Canada uh, keep the travel banned on that website, we won't, we won't be funding travel related activity. However, there's a whole bunch of other activities that we, we can fund, as you can see here, participation in trade event uh, virtually and also virtual meeting we can cover the cost of, of the uh, subscription to, um, to a virtual show, marketing tools, creation, adaptation, and translation, interpretation services, IP protection, consultant for uh, business consultant, tax and legal advice, and consultant for market research, feasibility study, uh, identification of key contact, and B2B facilitation. The main uh, criteria here is those activities need to target the foreign market. So if it's if they are for uh, in any ways related to your core activity in Canada, they're not eligible. It really needs like it's translation in French if you're going to France, but uh, for example, or in Spanish if you're going to Spain. Next slide, please. So uh, the response to uh, COVID-19 uh, for the program, so we have increased the number of, uh, of uh, vir virtual and uh, digital marketing and e-commerce. So uh, these two are to expand your e-commerce presence and explore uh, new foreign markets virtually. It has been very popular. Uh, companies are, are asking money for it, using it, and are seeing have, are having success uh, in in switching or beefing up their their e-commerce strategy. For example, um, so there is another uh, eligible activity: it's support to navigate COVID nineteen related market and COVID-19 specific regulation framework and trade barrier. That, so that would be an expense uh, in terms of hiring a consultant to help you navigate those barriers or give you advice on how to, for example, adapt your product to a specific uh, regulation in a foreign country. Uh, 
Uh, we have also opened the, the program to brokers in agriculture and agri-food sector, as long as the Canadian, that the majority of the, the product is of Canadian content. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is for CanExport SME. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about CanExport Innovation, which is to assist innovators from Canadian organization instead to establish a research and development partnership with a pre-identified foreign partner for the purpose of co-developing, validating, and adapting a technology. So this it is not funding research and development, and you'll, you'll find other programs uh, supported by the government of, of Canada to support the R&D, but it's not what what the trade commissioner service offer what we are uh, what can export offer is really to help you to secure that partnership next slide please so it is open to sme but also to academic institution and canadian non-governmental research center uh, it is also open to all sector and all market next slide please so it's open for uh, one technology that needs to be at TRL4 or higher. Um, the company needs to own the intellectual property and there's a need to, to or an intention to, to commercialize within five, five years. It's also open to explore, um, to find investors uh, abroad uh, that, could, that could be uh, funding the R&D per se. Next slide, please. Uh, this, I talked about it already, and I think you will have access to, it's on the website for the different definition of technology validation, adaptation, and co-development. And the time is running, so <laughs> I'll go quickly. Next slide, please. Uh, I think next slide, please. The COVID, uh, the COVID slide. Hopefully we're on that one with the little virus on the right. Uh, so like can export SME, we're supporting virtual activities. The program was supporting travel related activity. Almost that's almost all innovators were doing, but now there are also other activities that could be supported, like uh, pursuing a certification in foreign market, intellectual property. I believe you will be hearing a lot of that. Uh, please protect your property because it's it's uh, often not very well done. Uh, maybe in Europe it's not too bad, but if you're go going to China, please make sure you get the, the right uh, IP protection. And uh, next slide, please. The Can Export Association, I mentioned it, support national organization in undertaking international business development for the benefit of an entire industry. So if you're in a sector and there's another way to get funding or get supported with your association, you don't have to be a member of that association. The association need to provide the service to the whole sector, members or not. Next slide, please. These are, are again, the same eligible activities. Next slide, please. Community investment, I, I told you about, assist a, a Canadian community to attract foreign direct investment. Um, I want to mention for a Can Export Association, the application is once a year, as same as community investment. And for a Can Export Association, the uh, application process has opened on December uh, 1st and is open until uh, mid January, I believe. Uh, so I'll stop here, and uh, I will ask uh, Sandra Pilarquin from BDC uh, to do her presentation. Thank you. Merci, Annick. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and thanks in advance to Global Affairs for the invitation and for BDC also to be participating in uh, two other panels later this afternoon for e-commerce and for women entrepreneurs tomorrow. Um, we can um, actually go to the next slide right away and I will take the next uh, 15 minutes or so to walk you through the offering of PDC but mainly uh, dive into the uh, financial solutions that we have 
And I'll finish with two client stories that should be of interest. So first of all, um, if you think of BDC, it's the bank for Canadian entrepreneurs. The only thing that we do is to support entrepreneurs, so therefore commercial needs. You can categorize the, the offer of services with three main buckets. The most important one is definitely the financing solutions. We also have an arm for capital. And those that are uh, not aware, BDC is actually the most important partner within the venture capital Canadian ecosystem. And the other one is advisory services, which is a division that's been existing for a very long time and very complementary to the financial solutions that we offer. And some of the services are free of charge and other solutions uh, come with a fee. We can actually go to the next slide. I like to add this visual as it gives you a good idea of uh, who we are, where we are. So we reach over 60,000 uh, clients at this stage, Canadian SMEs, and we have offices in all provinces and territories. And we've uh, slightly adjusted the title of the slide uh, to confirm that we can reach to any businesses virtually and uh, hopefully uh, in person much more very soon. And if we uh, look at the, the three of us, the, you know, the three partners in crime around this table, so EDC, TCS, and BDC. So BDC has the greatest uh, footprint domestically speaking. However, we don't have any offices abroad. So anytime we support entrepreneurs with their reach towards international markets, we work hands in hands with the TCS and as well with EDC. We can go to the next slide, please. So here's just an example of the most popular reasons, projects that companies would come to BDC for. And uh, if I may start perhaps, you know, how it works usually is you ask your bank uh, what it is that they can do. Uh, and when it comes where the growth projects are, you know, becoming either uh, too, uh, too important or, you know, company keeps growing, this is where at some point you need to diversify where you borrow the funding and you should have different kind of partners. And it's usually well appreciated as well from your main bank because it's, it's, it's a, a good practice. And it will definitely help if there's any crisis or, um, you know, it's, it's, it's harder time, whether it is uh, industry specific or for other reasons. And we are, we know that it can happen. We're going through one of the major crises these days. So for instance, for working capital, obviously this is probably a very, uh, you know, a very sweet spot for BDC to be involved. There's, you know, the, all those projects where there's no traditional collateral to, to give uh, in exchange. So uh, this is where we like to play a role and we have very patient and flexible offer of services uh, for to cover that range. Otherwise, you want to buy a business, you want to uh, transfer a business, invest in technology, start a business, buy a building, purchase equipment. We're there and we have specialized products. And a lot of the time it's actually done with your bank. I've also highlighted here the fact that we also support international expansion and we do have uh, specialized products to it. And I'll, I'll get to this in a few minutes. We can go to next slide. And perhaps I can add also that something that we don't do is offer you know to to open a bank account we don't have any grants or contributions such as can export and uh we don't offer any line of credits this is why any canadian businesses need to be uh having a very strong relationship with a bank first a chartered bank and then they will come to bdc to uh, complement any other needs here's a famous slide that i have in any presentations that i give uh, this is more for those that are not yet uh, clients of BDC, or if you are and you have less than $100,000 of engagement with us, uh, and you have any growth projects such as uh, to tap into new markets in Europe, um, if, if uh, the project needs less than $100,000, uh, then this is the best option 
uh, for you to use. It's very swift. It's very quick, efficient. Uh, you go online and it's a 100% online process and there's no uh, application fee. So very uh, a very good to know feature. And we'll go to the next slide, please. So here are just the three examples of specialized uh, financial solutions that we have that could support your uh, international expansion projects. The first one is the expansion loan. And you don't have to remember how it's called. If you speak to your BDC account manager, they'll just know when you explain what the project is. But uh, this loan, for instance, is very flexible for the first two years. Uh, uh, because sometimes when we go abroad, we think we, you know, we do our best to anticipate how much it's going to cost, but it's it, it's hard to plan. And in the first two years, you need to have, you know, your line of credit um, open to cover the daily operations. And we want to make sure with this loan that for the first two years, it's very flexible in terms of what you have to repay. So if you want, you could only pay the interest and have more uh, capital available. And you can also, um, it acts like a revolving loan. So you can uh, have access to whatever portion of capital you repay within the first two years very quickly. And other uh, features attached to this loan as well that are uh, very appealing compared to just the traditional working capital loan. The other option would be what we call the purchase order financing. So we want to make sure that if you have any large domestic or international contracts, we don't want you to be using your line of credit to support any hiring of new staff or uh, purchase of large amount of materials and whatnot. We want to make sure the line of credit remains available for the daily operations. So we have designed this purchase order financing for these kind of projects. And as a matter of fact, the, um, the, the purchase order financing when it relates to international projects is designed with EDC. And the other one is not a loan per se, but we like to mention that at EDC, if there's a need for it, uh, we can disburse the amount in US dollars. And we know by experience that this is something that is appreciated by our clients that are uh, doing a lot of international business. So we'll go to next slide. Yeah, I believe that's the last slide before my two stories. Uh, this is another popular slide I like to have in any presentations I give. BDC being a different kind of bank, it's state owned as you know, we do have a mandate to ensure that the underserved entrepreneurs or groups are well served and we are there to support any gaps. I won't have time to talk about the different features we have to support these groups, but if you feel that it speaks to you um, and it's easy actually to have access to these, to this information or more information on the website or to, to speak to anyone at BDC. And quickly, those underserved groups would be the First Nations, newcomers, youth, women entrepreneurs, uh, whether your company is uh, social oriented and also black entrepreneurs. And we will move to the last portion of my presentation. Let me see how I'm doing with time. Am I okay, Annick? Just thumbs up. Uh, this should take just one more minute. I'll take maybe just a little more, but uh, let's do this quickly. So yeah, let's go to the next slide. And I'll just share two stories, one related to the financial support received in time of COVID, and one related to financial and advisory services received over the years in support of growth projects related to international expansion. So let's start with Quartz Company, founded in 1997, a company that has carved out a place of choice in the high-end winter coat manufacturing industry. Their coats are now sold in more than 20 countries, mainly in Canada, the United States, Germany, France, Japan, Norway, and Greenland. So obviously where there's lots of snow and people like to ski. It is established in the province of Quebec with two factories in Victoriaville and Montreal. So here's the story I wanna share. At the onset of this crisis, Quartz Management realized the negative impact that the pandemic would have on the retail industry. 
That is how the company developed a new niche, that of hospital mask, hoods, and gowns, which it now manufactures in addition to its clothes. In the summer of 2020, just this past summer, the company obtained over $1 million in financing from BDC, enabling it to reopen its factories and recall more than 80 employees. This financing comes from the working capital loan program set up by BDC for businesses affected by COVID-19. It features a lower than normal interest rate and principal holiday to give the company a chance to get back on its feet. And we'll go to the last slide, and I'll do this quickly because it's truly a different story. It's a family business, Louis Bourg Seafoods, founded in 1984. In 1991, the two owners purchased a processing plant in Louis Bourg, Nova Scotia. This was the first of a series of acquisitions for which BDC played an important financial support. Today, the firm owns some of the biggest seafood processing plants in Nova Scotia, 13 fishing boats, and over 500 employees. So the bad news is that they can't apply for can export. During the 2008 and 2009 recession, sales to the United States had declined sharply, as you might recall. The only international market Louisville Seafoods was interacting with at the time. It is when the owners decided to take the European and Asian markets. This diversification was beneficial because when one market is in decline, others often become stronger. The couple turned to BDC's global expansion advisory team to help prepare the plan and identify their target markets. As part of this outreach, they hired chefs with expertise abroad who introduced them to distributors and explained how local markets work. Over the years, the company has received several loans from BDC. The additional support from BDC Advisory Services helped save time and money while designing efficient strategies to develop e-commerce and international outreach. And on a final note, I just want to say this company has been extremely generous with BDC, sharing tips and advices for any other businesses that is, that is interested to tap into new international markets. And I'm happy to uh, share later on, um, I'm going to see with Global Affairs and that famous email they sent to all participants with the links, the most uh, recent ebook that we launched just uh, this week on the 1st of December around uh, international expansion and client stories, very practical. So I have the uh, you know, uh, I think that if you're attending this uh, webinar today, it's because you have that interest to do more with the European market or tap into a European market. So probably very timely to read this ebook. So on the final note, back to you, Anik, as I think you will um, briefly introduce um, a Steph from EDC before he starts. Yes, thank you very much, Sandra. That was amazing. Um, I'm happy to see that you know very well can export and you talk about it uh, as well. So you're doing my promotional work for me. This is great. Thank you so much. Um, now we'll go to Steph Willem presentation. So uh, like he, in the introduction, he's the regional vice president, Europe, Middle East and Africa or uh, EDC. So he's actually based in London, isn't it, Steph? So over That's to right. you. London, London, England. And London, London, England. Ontario. I still sometimes get mails <laughs> sent to our <laughs> London, uh, Ontario office, and, and they kindly send it on to London, England. Uh, bonjour. Good morning, everybody uh, joining us from Canada. And uh, good afternoon, bon après-midi to those of you uh, in Europe, like myself. And uh, thank you to Global Affairs Canada for the opportunity to provide a, a very brief overview of uh, what we believe are relevant EDC solutions uh, as it relates to potentially your export journey uh, in Europe because of CETA, or if you're looking to grow your export journey to, to Europe because of CETA. I should say at, uh, very quickly that I will not be touching upon uh, our COVID-related solutions. Uh, you can find information on that on EDC's website, edc.ca. Uh, simply put, uh, the majority of these are offered through our partners and, um, and, and you should be contacting 
uh, your your house bank uh, to to access those, and they will know how to access the various solutions that EDC is providing related to COVID. So next slide, please. And we'll skip right over there in the interest of time. Next slide, please. Uh, today, I want to provide just a quick overview of the most relevant parts. So you can divide EDC into four uh, different divisions, if you will, or four different activities. Uh, those are our insurance uh, or risk mitigation related activities. The second uh, are our financing related activities and solutions. Um, I will be spending most of the time on, on these two aspects of EDC for today. Uh, we also have knowledge uh, solutions and also connection solutions that I'll touch upon very briefly at the end if I have time. So next slide, please. So I'll start with the insurance side. Next slide, please. And the most relevant solution here is, of course, our trade uh, receivables ins insurance solution. Uh, this is by far the solution where we uh, uh, touch the most Canadian companies. And uh, it, it is a, a solution that is truly both a risk mitigation solution uh, and can also be a working capital solution for Canadian companies. Uh, there are numerous benefits to, uh, to, this, um, to this product. Uh, first of all, of course, is uh, having a insurance on your foreign receivables uh, gives you peace of mind about uh, collecting those, uh, those receivables and also enables you to offer open credit terms uh, to your customers and therefore enables you to be more competitive uh, in markets where open credit terms are expected. Uh, from a working capital perspective, of course, uh, having your foreign receivables insured will also allow your bank uh, to, uh, you, you'll be able to borrow against your foreign receivables if those are insured. Uh, your bank will lend against those uh, as well. It is also quite a flexible solution. And maybe if we jump to the next slide, please. There are uh, different ways to access this solution. First of all, it can be very much a selective process and, and that's done 100% uh, online, where if you do not have a very large book of, of foreign receivables. It's uh, you're just starting on your export journey, and uh, and uh, or you're entering a new market, uh, for example, uh, or you just have concern with uh, with few specific uh, foreign buyers. Uh, you can select a, a selective approach to ensuring which receivables you would like to purchase insurance on. Um, the alternative is a more comprehensive portfolio approach uh, where you would insure all of your foreign receivables uh, with EDC. And this is more appropriate, of course, if you have uh, where exports is a much more significant part of your business and, uh, and of course, would afford you a lot more working capital availability from, from your bank as well. So more appropriate for more established uh, exporters. Next slide, please. I briefly already touched upon the, uh, some of the risks, but just to outline them quickly, uh, we're talking here about default risk, uh, bankruptcy risk, repudiation risk, political risk, export and import restrictions, and of course, contract cancellation. What's probably more important to understand are what risks are, are not covered by the insurance policy. And that might be things such as disputes um, with your buyer, um, any sales to individuals or to uh, related companies. So sales to a subsidiary would not be covered uh, by, by our trade insurance policies. Uh, any type of, of um, contract you enter into, if there's already a problem before, we would not be covering those misrepresentations, corruption risks, those are all things that, that would not be covered. Next slide, please. So a quick example, a case study here is we have uh, a, uh, uh, an early stage sporting goods company uh, that is starting to receive interest uh, from the US and, and other markets. 
and recognize that um, in order for it to grow, uh, these are not opportunities that uh, should be ignored. The concern of the owner is, of course, being paid and how will they finance these contracts? And that's where a, uh, our trade credit insurance uh, can help both those things. So by providing a 90% guarantee on payment, uh, provides peace of mind that they will be paid. And second, by having them insured, it also means that they can borrow against those receivable with their bank. Next slide, please. I want to also quickly highlight uh, our bonding solutions because this is also important from a working capital perspective. Next slide, please. Uh, sometimes as part of entering into a contract, uh, your customer may be asking for a some type of performance guarantee, usually about 10% of the underlying contract value. And, and typically this is something that your bank would be providing. And however, uh, banks often ask uh, for collateral or tie up your line of credit uh, to provide this uh, guarantee to your customer. And of course, that eats up working capital, precious working capital for high growth companies. Uh, there again, our bonding solution is a guarantee solution that provides a 100% guarantee to the Canadian bank, which then frees up your lines or any other assets that your bank might be tying up to issue those uh, payment, uh, those performance guarantees. So another relevant solution that you should be familiar with. Next slide, please. So a quick example here is a Canadian company that would be winning a million dollar contract to the United States and is asked to post a 10% performance bond on contract. So that would tie up $100,000 worth of capital with, with the bank and over the life of the contract, so, so not insignificant. And so our guarantee to the bank would free up that requirement for, for a collateral so that uh, the uh, company would have access to the working capital to actually finance that, that contract. Next slide, please. I'll now jump into the, our financing solutions and touch upon those that I, I believe are, are most relevant uh, to uh, to you. Next slide, please. So we have numerous uh, flexible solutions at EDC, which are um, made available to both Canadian companies and uh, international buyers. So we have everything from pre-shipment uh, and, and work in progress uh, financing solutions uh, to, um, you know, capital uh, requirements for to buy capital assets to pursue international business. Uh, we also can provide financing to any of your foreign uh, subsidiaries. Uh, we can also provide financing for acquisitions. Uh, if you are entering into foreign M&A transactions, uh, we can help provide the debt. Uh, and uh, maybe something that's relevant to some of the participants here joining us from Europe, uh, if you are looking to expand into Canada, we also can provide uh, financing for that foreign direct investment into Canada. Next slide, please. From a, from a, from a working capital perspective, you know, supporting Canadian companies, our, our most uh, popular solution, uh, which we touch the most Canadian companies with, is our exporter guarantee program. And similar to, to BDC, it is very much a, a partnership um, solution. We work with the Canadian banks uh, to risk share, ultimately, so that your uh, house bank, uh, your charter bank, uh, increases their risk appetite and are willing to provide you with, with more capital as you pursue international opportunities. It is quite a, a flexible structure. Um, it is really meant to complement uh, the work that um, that your 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 house bank does with you, uh, and is meant to increase their their risk appetite. Next slide, please. Direct lending. This is one of the ways that 
EDC is different from many other export credit agencies around the world is we do have the ability to do direct lending. Um, and, and as I mentioned, both to Canadian companies and to, to foreign companies. So um, in Canada, we very much look to provide direct lending as a gap filler. So again, if, you're, um, if your house bank uh, has reached its limit uh, and we can't, uh, one of our co-insurance or guarantee solutions is not appropriate, then we can provide direct lending, lending to, to you as a, as a Canadian company. Um, our, our lending is provided on commercial terms. So similar to BDC, we do not have any grant programs. Uh, we benchmark against uh, other loans with similar tenures and, and risk profile. Uh, we do have flexibility where we play up and down the balance sheet. our equity activities. Next uh, slide, please. So a quick uh, example of a financing uh, situation. So here we have uh, an apparel company uh, that is winning a very, very significant new contract in, in Australia, um, would effectively double the company's revenue. So can you imagine the impact this will have on their uh, working capital? Uh, they are requested to provide open terms as well, and, um, and, um, and that's where our ex uh, exporter guarantee program in partnership with your house bank uh, can be very valuable to uh, provide a significant increase in the, uh, your existing line of credits with your bank, uh, or to establish a separate uh, working capital facility explicitly for that export contract. Uh, where we would partner with the bank. And if the bank, for whatever reason, doesn't have any additional capacity, uh, we can do that bilaterally and provide the financing directly without your house bank as well. So we have that flexibility. Next slide, please. Uh, and another example of, of financing that's often used is in the case of uh, mergers and acquisitions. So technology company, Canadian technology company looking to purchase a competitor in the US. Um, many Canadian banks um, don't, don't have, let's say, the risk appetite uh, to, to uh, take US assets as, as a security. Uh, so this is something as well where we can get involved and either provide the financing directly uh, to you or if the, if the Canadian bank does have appetite, of course, to, to partner with them, either through our exporter guarantee program or as well uh, through a, a bespoke guarantee solution for that uh, acquisition that you have in mind. Next slide, please. Um, so very briefly on knowledge solutions and advisory services. This is um, something that is, I would say, newer for EDC. We've always been more focused on our insurance and, and financing solution but recognize that Canadian companies uh, do require information and knowledge to enter new markets. Uh, next slide, please. We do therefore have a host uh, of information on our website, various webinars on sectors or, or markets that we've done either ourselves or in partnership with Global Affairs or BDC or various chambers of commerce uh, that, that we uh, partner with. So, there's a lot of good information here as you explore new markets, try to identify new opportunities. Next slide, please. I'd also like to um, uh, highlight a, a special partnership we have with the Forum for International Trade and Training. This is a program that uh, EDC developed with them to help Canadian companies and, and entrepreneurs uh, increase their skills and knowledge on international trades. I would encourage you also to, to have a look at that. Uh, that could be very helpful for you. Next slide, please. Okay, one more minute. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. I forgot to start my stopwatch, so thank you for that. Um, next is, so our connection and advisory services, just very briefly, we, we do provide connection services where we introduce Canadian companies to some of our international relationships. Uh, this is a very bespoke program 
We obviously uh, listen to the needs of the companies that we have relationship with, uh, understand what they're looking for, what innovative solutions or what their pain points or requirements are, uh, and then look to identify Canadian companies that may have a relevant solution and then actively uh, introduce them. And, and hopefully that will lead to, to contract uh, down, down the road. Uh, so that is also something that we do. Um, next slide, please. And as Sandra mentioned, we do have offices around the world. We have 19 representations. Um, they are all small uh, offices relative to our colleagues uh, at Global Affairs and the TCS. Important to note that we are uh, co-located in Canadian consulates, um, high commissions and embassies, and work very closely with the Trade Commissioner Service uh, in these markets. Uh, so we, we uh, go to meetings together. When Canadian companies come to the market, we're happy to meet with you to, to share our knowledge. And, uh, and even we accompany Canadian companies to prospective customers to explain what buyer financing solutions that we can bring to the table you know, to help facilitate. So uh, all very much available and, and look forward to working together. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. It's nice to have the map to uh, to see where EDC is, but uh, the trade commissioners around are, are around the world. You must have seen a presentation earlier or maybe it's later on the trade commissioner service, but the idea is reach one of us and you'll get access and information to on uh, all of government programs. Um, thank you so much, and uh, I'm sure the, it, it has triggered many questions. I got three, and unfortunately <laughs> for you guys, they are all for me. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm sure there will be more coming, and we, we still have, uh, mm -hmm. sorry. Free boring, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely, they should actually take advantage of it first. I I think more will come and don't don't stay there, Sandra and Stephen. So uh, one question from Carl's buyers uh, from Context. Sorry if I'm ruining the pronunciation. When do you expect can export SME or innovation to support travel as an allowable expense again? What criteria are you using to make that determination? Um, it's not can export making the decision, but uh, looking at our website, it, it is uh, related to the, the what foreign countries and foreign government are recommending if they're not letting people in the country. Well, we don't recommend you to go. Uh, as Global Affairs Canada, we're also managing the consular service, so we want to prevent Canadians to be in trouble when they're abroad or to be stuck. Uh, there's a question of quarantine in some countries, so uh, if you go there, you, you can be stuck. And also there's limited transportation uh, option for now. Uh, but I invite you to visit the website. It explains a little bit why we're making that decision, why we're recommending not to travel for now. Um, got a, another question regarding can export if our company is pursuing new product markets uh, that we have not done before. However, we are pursuing this for the USA when we have done business where we have done business before is this eligible this question is coming from Desiree Wartenby uh, LED smart uh, you will be eligible uh, if the sale in the target market are less than 100,000 or less than 10% of the company's total sale even if it's a different uh, product it, it's the same company uh, but for the USA, please note that we have four sub-regions, USA, USA West, South, Northeast, Midwest, uh, and the 100K or 10% applies for each of the sub-regions. Hope it, it answered your question. If not, you can send us the, an email to can export SMEs at international.gc.ca or uh, read the application guides. It, it gives example and answers. 
Uh, there's a question from Nick Effernan, Efco Elastomers Inc. If you are aiming on traveling to Europe for trade shows or meeting in the summer or fall, are we able to apply for travel coverage or do we have to wait until travel restrictions are lifted to apply? I, I love the the this uh, this pandemic actually because I can I can get live answer from my colleagues who are also stuck at home. <laughs> so Louis Tama, who is the uh, my expert, say you will have to wait until the travel restriction are lifted. Right now we do not approve any travel activity. The program will announce new measures for SME once the restriction will be lifted. So uh Please uh, friend us on Facebook, on social media, and visit our website regularly. And you you'll know when we lift the uh, when when we accept a new uh, travel activity. Actually, we got question for you, my dear, for uh, BDC. Let me see. All right. To BDC, does BDC offer support for growth projects aligned with e-commerce strategy? That's question number one, Sandra. What is the easiest way to find out more about COVID-19 special loans? That's your second question. Fortunately, I don't have the names on, on this one. Over to you, Sandra. No problem. So the, the second question for the COVID-19 related products um, it's, it's well, unfortunately, uh, yes, as all everyone knows, COVID is still, uh, is not yet history, but the good news is that those, uh, specialized offerings that features, you know, interesting terms and conditions are still available to SMEs. So you should definitely look into what's out there if it's not done yet. And uh, it's a good question in the sense that early uh, March, April, May, entrepreneurs were like, well, this is great. We hear from government, from the bank, from EDC, EDC, lots of things. But where to start? Is there a one-stop shop? So uh, I would answer, go on bdc.ca. And as soon as you click on the financing tab, the first pop-up that comes is actually the COVID-19 related uh, possibilities. And it's not only the BDC related ones, it just gives all of them and tells you like where you should go first and uh, and whatnot all should be that. So that should be probably the, the recommendation for the second question. And the first one regarding e-commerce, absolutely. So before COVID, uh, BDC already offered uh, services. So it would be advisory solutions that we had and also a typical traditional working capital loans that could cover for any, uh, any uh, expenses related to the e-commerce projects. But the good uh, news is that because of uh, the COVID-19 context, BDC wanted to make sure that that uh, kind of uh, advisory solutions we were already offering would be revamped top notch because there's a lot out there. So we wanted to make sure we would offer uh, very tailored services and it helps companies establish a strategy. Should I go with Shopify, Amazon, or develop a specific strategy to target specific markets, um, whether it is to set up an online shop or any, or revamp the existing transactional websites, all of these, we have actually advisory solutions. We have also free eBooks and whatnot and advisory solutions that you pay for. And we have the financial services. And on a final note, and it just because it's so easy for me to do this, if you listen to Anik, it's definitely good if you take the time to list all the expenses that would be related to your project aligned with e-commerce and you apply for can export. Um, because this is exactly what uh, can export can support nowadays, especially that uh, it doesn't support for now the expenses for traveling abroad. Thank you. Thank Merci. You. Thank you, Sandra. It's very, very good uh, pitch for me. Thank you very much. I want to say too that, uh, and I'm getting question on, on that as well. There's multiple programs, and I found an app 
<laughs> there's always a nap for this uh, for for everything. It's called uh, in French the Entreprise Canada. So I suppose in English it's the same. I wish I could show you, but uh, I'm not sure. So all the the government of Canada program are on that app. So you can and there's also another one a website that's called Innovation. And you enter what your needs are, and it will direct you with uh, to to uh, to the, the different programs, the government of Canada programs. So it's very. I doubt that you won't find one for you that would answer to your needs. Uh, Steve, Steph, we I got one for you. Let me check. I lost it now. Okay, you are ABC. Uh, could you give give me an example of a client using both BDC and EDC services? Good. I was I was expecting. It's been an hour now, and nobody said Brexit. <laughs> which being in London, <laughs> that's uh, refreshing. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I'm I'm most familiar where where we partner on the uh, equity and, and quasi equity solutions. So, um, EDC and, and BDC are very uh, active in, in providing growth um, working capital to to Canadian mid market companies um, and also venture capital companies uh, to help them fund uh, their, their international growth. And that's something that we do very, very closely together. Uh, we also very actively share leads. Uh, obviously EDC is, has pre COVID, uh, been primarily focused on, on helping Canadian companies with their export journey. And therefore, uh, many Canadian companies obviously look to grow within Canada. Um, you know, before going abroad and therefore um, relevant leads were, were always passed on to BDC. It's a different world now, right? Um, many companies are born global, uh, which has meant that EDC and BDC do work a lot closer together than 10 years ago. Uh, that's the reality. And um, so there's many solutions that we, we offer together. Sometimes it's even behind the scenes. The Canadian customer wouldn't even realize that there's risk sharing uh, happening behind the scenes too. Um, now, as we come out of COVID, I think uh, many Canadian companies uh, are realizing that uh, going going global is the way to recover. Uh, the best solution is is more revenue um, and and not to borrow more if possible, right? So, um, you know, EDC and BDC will continue to work very closely together. And adding, uh, Steph, also, we have a specialized team covering the tech companies. And I think it's been over three years now, we actually have designed the two crowns, a tech loan. So companies in tech, uh, the, like you said, sometimes it's behind the scenes. Uh, but ultimately, if they do ask for the tech loan, they, they understand that it's, uh, it's a risk shared type of loan that is offered to them by both crowns and they end up having the added value of the other partner at some point within their uh, growth journey. Right, thank you. And uh, I think Sandra, you mentioned this afternoon or uh, is it tomorrow or later during the this event, there, there will be a discussion when a successful women entrepreneur uh, no, I, I'm sorry, it's not you who told me about that, but we will be having a discussion and mentioning how uh, her company has grown using the different program and how successful uh, she is now in Europe. Uh, it could be me. It could be. I know that Ricardo and my team is part of the e-commerce panel later this afternoon, and there's a great client story of a women, women entrepreneur that's based in uh, British Columbia. And, okay. Yes, and how she managed to, uh, you know, she ended up uh, being interested to see who was buying her uh, yoga uh, um, uh, sportswear uh, right. outside of Canada, and somehow there was a niche in Germany, and then she digged and ended up designing a specific uh, marketing plan to reach out more uh, of the German uh, consumers 
via e-commerce. Very, right. very interesting story. Might oh, be that. Nice. So might be that's why. And now I, I'm thinking it's it's something else. A woman who's who's building a vending machine and adapting them to different products, like from cupcake to computers, and uh, that use uh, can export innovation to to uh, partner with with a foreign partner, and then use can export SME to uh, explore the uh, European markets. And she probably got got funding from EDC and BBC as well. So uh, there, yeah, no, great, lots of stories. Yeah, I Thank think, but it, it, this is the best example that you'll get in this event. Uh, hearing hearing uh, entrepreneurs like you uh, uh, talking about their experience, so I think it, that will be uh, very interesting for all of you. I hope uh, everybody. The participant stays for the rest of the, the the summit. So I think I have two minutes left. Would you like uh, to conclude or uh, provide a point of wisdom? How we say that? <laughs> Keep looking to diversify, as you heard from uh, you know that company I shared their uh, you know Louis Bor Seafoods. That and then Steph, you just mentioned. Even though at some point when the COVID hit, there was kind of a you know a timing where I think companies and also bankers and people were like, "Whoa, what does this mean?" Protectionism seemed to be out there, and uh, buying local. Well, does it mean that we should you know and, and you know to do uh, you know and travel banned and whatnot? And people started thinking, "Well, perhaps I should look into." diversify more within my own country, but I think it's proven, no, 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 it's it's still important. And Canada being, you know, a country limited in terms of outreach, depending on, on the kind of products you sell, but keep on looking on how to diversify. And for sure the e-commerce, it might be the easiest way to start if you haven't started. Right. Yeah. The only thing I would add is this is a, a unique time there's lots of changes happening in supply chains uh, because of COVID. Uh, a lot of companies are looking at their supply chains, are looking at reshoring, nearshoring. Um, so there's, there's, I would say, more openness, right, to to look at new suppliers. And CETA is very powerful. You know, we're very fortunate to have CETA. We're also fortunate now to have a transitional agreement between Canada and the UK. Uh, that will ensure you know, a smooth transition after after Brexit. Um, so so you know you know now is now is the time to to look at for those new opportunities because there's more doors open than there was uh, you know nine months ago. Right. Well, yeah. Take advantage of free trade agreements. It seems like Canadian SMEs aren't um, doing it to the fullest. So that's another message. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. That was very wise. Um, for e-commerce and, and digital marketing, there's lots of information out there. I keep uh, being amazed by what uh, BDC is producing in terms of uh, guide, guidelines, guides, and uh, webinars. So lots of information out there. Um, and and uh, thank you for just being there today is, is the way to go uh, to diversify. Thank you.